Hello. Did you know that your body aches or joint pains, or your chronic fatigue, may be signaling that something is wrong with your diet or your lifestyle? Well, in this video, I'll talk about the 7 foods that most inflame your body, and at the end of the video, I'll talk about anti-inflammatory foods that you should eat freely, which are healthy and will benefit your body. If you suffer from a lot of pain, introducing these foods into your diet can help you avoid using pharmacy anti-inflammatories, and then, yes, blood pressure goes up, kidney problems, harms your liver, and much more. So, if you live tired, indisposed, or inflamed, this video will help you. Chronic inflammation is the kind we don't notice but slowly undermines our body and can be the root of various diseases such as heart attacks, strokes, cancer, dementia, diabetes, kidney disease, and even liver fat. I guarantee you will greatly improve your quality of life by removing this inflammation that is inside you. But first, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and hit the bell to receive our upcoming content. Also, share this video in your WhatsApp groups with your friends and family, because health information can help everyone have a better life. And tell me, do you feel very inflamed? Do you want to resolve this? What part of the United States or the world are you from? Right below. Let's go. Chronic and systemic inflammation, which means inflammation throughout the body, is a serious health problem that can worsen or improve with diet. We have seven types of foods that can increase your inflammation. Look, it's not enough to just introduce anti-inflammatory foods into your diet. No, you will also have to eliminate those that cause inflammation. What foods cause inflammation in your body? Seventh food. Processed meats. One of the most inflammatory foods is processed and cured meat. We are talking about sausages, hot dogs, salami, ham, bacon, bologna, hamburgers, nuggets, and a lot of stuff, right? According to the WHO, the consumption of processed meats is considered carcinogenic. Yes, now processed meats are classified in group 1 of carcinogens, which means there is concrete evidence that they increase the risk of cancer, especially in the intestines and stomach. They are in the same carcinogenic group as asbestos, diesel exhaust, and cigarettes. To put it in perspective, WHO reviewed evidence from over 800 scientific publications. Some people think, I've given up sausages and ham, but if you like turkey breast, see, despite being white meat, it's on the same list of carcinogenic foods. Even though it is made from white meat, it is on the same list because these foods cause inflammation and increase the risk of cancer, especially due to the presence of nitrates and nitrites. They are used as preservatives and extend the shelf life of the meat. They form nitrosamines in your body, which inflame and cause cancer. Eating occasionally may not be a big problem for the vast majority of people. The problem is eating every day. Just for you to understand, consuming 150 gram sausage increases your risk of colorectal cancer by almost 20%. So, if you're watching the video while eating a sausage roll, throw it away. Sixth food. Refined carbohydrates. Here, we have refined carbohydrates, which include things like white bread, pastries, cakes, donuts, and even white rice. Many products can be found in your bakery, such as rolls, cakes, pies. Pastries can inflame you. Why do they cause inflammation? Due to their high glycemic index, they cause spikes in your blood sugar right after you eat them. This will make your pancreas produce more insulin, leading to an inflammatory cascade. If these foods have fiber, they will not let your blood sugar rise so quickly. Adding some protein or fiber, like rice with beans, makes it okay. But if you eat isolated rice, it will inflame you. If you don't like beans, add vegetables or an egg to reduce the sugar spike. The same goes for bread. Don't put turkey or ham slices. Eating a high-carb, refined diet can also negatively affect your gut microbiota. It doesn't mean you have to cut carbs completely, but it's interesting to opt for healthier versions like whole wheat flour, oats, rye flour, flaxseed flour, and buckwheat flour. There are many interesting options. Fifth food. Excessive sugar. Excessive sugar intake is another cause of inflammation. Whether it's brown sugar, raw sugar, or table sugar, if you eat too much, it will inflame you. The problem is that hidden sugars are everywhere. You buy biscuits with salt, and they have sugar. You buy tomato sauce, which seems healthy, but it's full of sugar. Even salad dressings, which are perceived as healthy, can be loaded with sugar. Sugar has empty calories, it gives you energy but brings no nutrients to you. 
Just like refined wheat, it will increase your insulin and potentially lead to an inflammatory cascade. The problem is that if you go to the supermarket, you are buying hidden sugar without even knowing it. I bought these salty cookies, they seem healthy. Check it out, it has sugar. I bought this tomato sauce. Check it out, it has sugar. I bought this salad dressing. Look, it has sugar. Sugar has empty calories and gives you energy, but it brings no nutrients to you. In the same way, refined wheat increases your insulin and can lead to an inflammatory cascade. Not only that, sugar causes advanced glycation end products that caramelize your proteins, making the collagen in your skin stiffer, causing wrinkles, making your joints stiff, causing pain, making your arteries stiff, and causing a heart attack. So, you need to reduce sugar. Sugar is in everything. If you buy something processed, read the labels. If it has hydrogenated fat, leave it there in the supermarket. Trans fat is poison. Fourth food. Trans fats. Trans fats come from vegetable oils that undergo hydrogenation to make the fat more solid, like saturated fat at room temperature. The problem is that trans fat, besides worsening your cholesterol by increasing LDL, bad cholesterol, and lowering HDL, good cholesterol, activates the body's inflammatory pathways, increasing inflammatory markers such as C-reactive protein. Oh, that trans fats don't exist anymore. Mistake. They are in microwave popcorn. Snacks. Potatoes. Ice creams. Margarines. Cakes. Pies. Cookies. Frozen meals. If the label says partially hydrogenated fat or even trans fat, leave it right there in the supermarket. Trans fats are poison. Third food. Omega-6 rich vegetable oils. Omega-6 rich vegetable oils, like corn, sunflower, and soybean oil, are pro-inflammatory. That means they increase inflammation in your body. In the past, our diet was rich in omega-3. If you ate chicken, pork, beef, and eggs, you would get a lot of omega-3. Animals used to have a diet with a 1 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Today, this balance has been disrupted because of changes in livestock farming. Animals are now fed grains, which are cheaper and rich in omega-6. Some places have seen omega-6 consumption jump from 1 to 1 to 5 to 1 or even more. Omega-6 is found in vegetable oils such as corn, sunflower, and soybean and is pro-inflammatory. Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. If you consume little omega-3, found in deep sea fish such as salmon, sardines, trout, tuna, and mackerel, you shouldn't buy these types of oils. Choose olive oil instead. What about using it for frying? Yes, you can use it. I've been wanting to make a video about olive oil, but no one has asked yet. If you want me to make a video about olive oil, addressing the main questions, write it down, and I'll do it soon if many people ask. Second food. Alcohol. The second food, or rather, drink, is alcohol. Although red wine contains resveratrol, it is not part of the Mediterranean diet. Red wine does contain resveratrol, but what's the problem with alcohol? If you weigh the pros and cons, alcohol is not worth it. Alcohol overloads your liver and can cause inflammation, leading to conditions like fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, fibrosis, and even cirrhosis. When your liver metabolizes alcohol, it releases acetaldehyde, which causes inflammation. Alcohol also alters your gut microbiota, leading to a leaky gut, where the intestine becomes permeable. The immune system is also weakened, and besides potentially becoming addicted, it can change your relationship with family and friends. Not to mention that alcohol is carcinogenic. First food. Ultra-processed foods. The worst of all is ultra-processed food. They contain everything we mentioned before. Lots of sugar. Bad fats. Lots of salt. Refined carbohydrates. Processed meats, preservatives, additives to enhance flavor, aroma, color, texture, emulsifiers. If you want food that will really inflame you, put these ready-made meals. Frozen meals. Snacks. And breakfast cereals in your supermarket cart. Even sugar-free sodas can cause inflammation and alter your microbiota if consumed regularly. If you have healthy habits. Sleep well. Drink plenty of fluids. Avoid smoking. Manage stress. Exercise regularly and maintain a healthy weight. You can eat some ultra-processed foods from time to time without ruining your health. But if you were already very inflamed, you won't make your problem worse by eating these foods, right? 
Anti-inflammatory foods and habits. What should you do besides cutting out these inflammatory foods? It's essential to have healthy habits. Sleep well and drink plenty of water, as it helps eliminate toxins. Avoid smoking, manage stress, exercise regularly, and maintain a healthy weight. Belly fat can cause inflammation. Adopt an anti-inflammatory diet by eating more fruits. Especially berries like strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. These fruits are rich in anthocyanins, which reduces inflammation. Tomatoes are rich in lycopene, which is anti-inflammatory. Guava and papaya also contain lycopene. Eat more vegetables, like kale, broccoli, spinach, and purslane. They are rich in antioxidants that reduce inflammation. Seeds like chia, flax and nuts are rich in omega-3. Which, as I mentioned earlier, our diet is imbalanced and lacks omega-3. Include fatty fish in your diet. Such as salmon, sardines, trout, and mackerel. Olive oil contains antioxidants and healthy monounsaturated fats that reduce inflammation. Drink green tea. Which contains epicatechins. High cocoa chocolate also has anti-inflammatory properties and can even reduce brain inflammation in older people, improving memory. Garlic has allicin, which reduces inflammation, and spices like turmeric, ginger, bay leaf, cinnamon, and cloves all have anti-inflammatory properties. I hope you enjoyed the video, continue exploring health content on our channel by watching one of the videos that appears on your screen remember to subscribe to the channel, and until the next video, thank you very much.